Chapter 1 Do I really have to order you to take time off, Margaret? Dr. Matthew McLennan carefully folded his stethoscope and gestured for Maggie to get dressed before returning grimly to his desk. Make no mistake, it's not a case if you will suffer a heart attack, it's when you will suffer one. He briefly thumbed through her medical file as he waited for Maggie to return to her chair. But as she sat down before him, he looked up from reading through her medical history and leant toward her. His heavily hooded eyes flashed accusingly at her and his caterpillar eyebrows burrowed deeply into his forehead, almost joining in the middle. I know you mean well, Dr. McLennan, but it's impossible for me to take time off now. All I need is one more month to pull this deal together. So much is at stake. The reality is that if I quit now, I may as well call it a day. I wish I could help Maggie, but I'm urging you, not just as a friend, but as your doctor. Your blood pressure is through the roof. Your heartbeat is erratic and you're adrenalized to the max. It's a miracle you haven't collapsed. I've been working hard, it's true, harder than normal, but in one month it will all be back to normal and I can relax. I don't think you realise how serious this is, Maggie. You seem to be under the illusion that your heart is something you can control, that somehow you can just buy yourself an extra month before it packs it all in. Well, Maggie Green, I've got news for you. News you're not going to like. I know you have a capacity to endure more stress than the average person, but even you have your limitations. What do you suggest I do? Chuck everything I've worked for and sit under a tree somewhere meditating, she said crossly. Don't be so dramatic, Maggie. You've been telling yourself that workaholic story all your life. It's time to tell yourself a new story. One with plenty of chapters about rest. Take a break. Put your feet up. Go somewhere nice. Somewhere you've always wanted to go, but could never find the time. You've changed recently. I've noticed it. We all have. Quite frankly, I'm worried about you, Maggie. You've lost your sparkle. Your humour. You've lost you. You've become so brittle and short-tempered. I don't mean to be unkind. I'm saying this as your friend. The words stung, biting into the fragile core of her self-esteem. She hated criticism at the best of times, but this time the words especially hurt. So it was true. Dr. McLennan was summing up what she had always feared. She was brittle, hard-hearted, uncaring and unlovable. She fought back the tears which sprung to her eyes, and unable to fight back any longer, she slumped back in her chair. Do yourself a favour. Take some time off. Recharge. Rediscover the Maggie that I used to know. The Maggie we all love. All right. I'll do as you suggest. I'll take some time out. Promise me. Yes, I promise. Maggie got up dejectedly and made her way to the door. She walked out of his office into the cool Manhattan air. As she merged with the busy pedestrian highway swimming with New York's most successful elite, the reality of her situation hit with a thud. She, Maggie Green, Miss Invincible, was burnt out. Her health was at risk, and other than Matt McLennan, nobody cared. Everything she had worked so hard for suddenly seemed insignificant. The reality was that other than her work, she had nothing. Nothing and nobody. If she were to go away, as preposterous as the notion was, it would have to be alone.